Hi, you guys. Welcome back to what was supposed to be a first impression Friday of an indie pattern company, which I have not done in so long, but kind of after getting in the groove of things with the big four, releasing so many new patterns over the past month and a half or so, I was kind of, you know, feeling inspired to start doing them more regularly, which means I'd have to do indie company patterns. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I filmed an entire hour and 20 minute long um, video uh, first impression review with no audio, like literally none. There, It would be like in this blue section here. So it's fine. It's, it's fine. <laughs> We're just going to do a second impression. Um, and I'll probably go through them a little bit faster than I normally do, but that's okay. There's lots of patterns here and I still have lots to say. So without further ado, today we are reviewing So Different. She has a lot of really great info on her like about So Different page. The designer's name is Laura and she started out designing fabric made her way into blogging with a range of free simple one size patterns and then branched out into multi-size paper patterns which is what we are going to look at today she offers a ton of different events um, i think she's in the northern england area yeah yorkshire countryside um here's some info on her fabric designs equally beautiful we'll talk about that a little bit as we go as well um, and yeah, you can just learn a lot about her through this little about page. These are always so fascinating when it comes to indie patterns because everybody has such a vast background. But if you want to shop her fabrics, you do that here. Um, textiles and tipples is a art fair. Um, that's also in her events along with some sewing retreats, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So the patterns, um, I am going to go through each one, um, but I might have more to say about one than the other, depending on my second impression of it. I do want to talk about the size chart a little bit. Um, since she is in England, obviously they, she uses UK sizes and most of her stuff is in, well, all of her stuff is in centimeters. The only mention of inches in this entire website is right here. Each listing has finished garment measurements, but they're only in centimeters. So you'd have to convert those for yourself, use your fast fit workbook and determine what ease makes sense for you there. But I will not be able to speak on that um, throughout this video. Just know that she does have US sizes four to 26, which body measurement size is a hip of 36 ish to 57 and a half. And when I polled you guys asking about like what the size inclusivity really mean? Like what numbers should I be looking for? A 60 inch hip was what you guys were asking for. So this is not that, but it is close. Um, maybe one more size and she would be, she would be the most inclusive of all the inclusiveness, right? Um, okay. So that's what I have to say about sizing. I am going to leave this up in case I need to refer back to it, but I don't think I am. Um, that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Oh, actually one more thing. Some of them do come in all the sizes in one pattern. Others of them have them broken down into like what would be alphanumeric sizing, but she doesn't use as, she doesn't use letters. She still uses numbers, but it's a range eight to 10, 12 to 14, you know, so on and so forth. So, okay, now we'll look at the patterns. So she has her patterns broken down into like different kinds of I don't know, themes. Um, so there's a new retro, there's basics, there's layering one. Um, so we'll see those as we go. They're usually indicated right here, but this is the new retro, which kind of leans into the seventies. As you can see, it is a, this is a true wrap dress. It has the option of this, um, loose on sleeve and this really pretty like, um, flouncy ruffle thing. Um, and then it also comes, you can do it without the sleeve and it would be like a, like a kind of like a cap sleeve situation. And um, she does offer in her listings a little description of what you're getting. Um, very good description. I never was wanting more information. Um, suggested fabrics were great. Again, I always love when they include like a generalized description of the fabric in addition to the specific substrates. Like for this one, it would be 
lightweight wovens with drape or something like that um, to help you kind of make sense of what all of these specific ones mean but also like when you're in the store if you don't see those words you can st still kind of get an idea if you're in the right range or not um then there's fabric requirements and then she has a section on notions and this is all you're going to see um in each listing for finished garment measurements so again you do have to convert to centimeters on your own um or convert to inches from centimeters on your own but that's how her listings are set up most of the patterns are 12 pounds which these days equate to about 12 dollars um, for the PDF, there are some that were like in the eight pound, eight dollar range um, for them, like more basic designs. But that's the Darjeeling frock. Um, in the quick make section, I did think this was really interesting that she has all of these kind of separated. And from what I remember, they all had a time frame of two, two and a half hours, which I think is a really cool way to kind of list your um, patterns. Like, based on time. I guess I never really thought of that before because I don't, I'm not short on time to sew. Um, but if I were, like if I were needing a new top for tonight, I guess, and I know I've only got a few hours, like I know I could, I know I could come to sew different, go to the basic section, download it, tape it together really quickly and sew it up in two and a half hours. I mean, you could definitely do this in an afternoon. Um, so I thought that was really cool. You'll notice that the designs are on the more basic side, but I mean, that's okay. This one and um, a lot of the others you'll see really highlight print mixing, color blocking, um, and leaning into that kind of pieced look. So this one, as you can see here, is meant to be color blocked. Um, this one I felt like for me was a little bit long. Um, a lot of her patterns I found myself saying were more ideal for apple shapes, which I don't say that very often. Um, mostly sewing patterns will highlight, you know, a, a hourglass or a pear. But I feel like a lot of these patterns would be good for you apple shaped women. If you do have a curvier bottom, you know, as well as I do, this is not going to be flattering on us. The way I get around that and still make patterns that I love is I just shorten it. So instead of it hitting at the, like the, it's a high low hem. So instead of the front hitting, you know, at the crotch line, I move it all the way up to like my natural waist. And then wherever the, the gray falls for the back um, is where it falls. And that tends to be like a lot more flattering, showing that I do have a waist in there somewhere. Um, so yeah, I thought this one was fun and cute. Again, if you just look at the line drawing, right, and you're not looking at the fabrication of it all, it is still a pretty basic top with a center front seam and a back yoke. Um, but she takes the time to kind of think it through for you. How can you make this unique? Absolutely, you can make this out of all one fabric, or you can do it this way. You can also do plays on stripes, plays on texture, um, all of those things. So another quick make, I'm not gonna go into this one, it's just a bat wing top. We've seen these a thousand times. Um, and you'll see the quick makes too end up being a little bit cheaper. These are the $8.50 ones. Um, but yeah, your really great basic bat wing top. Um, there was also a basic boxy top right here. With So boxy top with the darts, sleeve on, sleeve off. There was a raglan one right here, boxy raglan. This one has like a little curved um, hem to it as well. So lots of great options. If you, if you like something that's a little bit oversized, not super fitted, um, I think you'll be really happy with her basics collection. Everything else, as I started to go through it, I realized had a bit of a artsy flair to it, okay? So it's not hippie, necessarily. It's not boho. It's very, like, artsy. Um, and there are some fun details that are included. Um, this one, the chamomile caftan, also part of the new retro collection, I thought was really cool, mostly because of the sleeve. Um, but it does also have this underbust seam with this deep V neckline, which I also thought was really beautiful. But you can see how the sleeve comes together here. And then here are the different lengths. You can do tunic, dress, or caftan. I prefer the midi length myself. This starts to feel a little bit like a, um, 
I don't know, like an oversized plus um, tunic length. It's just like, it's a little frumpy for my taste. But I do feel like the longer version feels more elevated, feels more elegant. Um, and you could add a little bit of shaping in there if you wanted. Um, you could work out some fisheye darts or, you know, take in the side seams a little bit. I think you could do some things to make it, um, you know, a little more fitted if that's what you chose to do. Then next up, we had this artist smock. Um, there's an artist smock, there's a fisherman's smock, and there's like a, another artist type dress that has, they all have this neckline, which I think is so chic and elegant, especially in this kind of fabrication. I mean, tell me that doesn't look like really, really expensive. Um, but it's very simple, right? It's just as simple as the, as the little top we looked at with the color blocking, um, the darts are in a bit of a different place, but other than that, you just add this collar to it and you are good to go. Now, one thing I did notice, a lot of her photos left a lot to be desired, okay? So a lot of them just have this situation, this background on, and they're on this dress form. This dress form is not like one of those that is supposed to resemble a human body at all. It's basically like a long padded hanger with boobs <laughs> there's like no shape to it anywhere else and the shoulders are really narrow so a lot of her clothes don't fit this dress form and so it was really hard for me to assess fit on it because like this is not where a normal shoulder ends you know this neckline how big is it i can't tell in relation to this super small shoulder and then same thing with the bust darts i don't know how on a human being it would fit um because it's this is just not proportional this this dress form it's not when you look at it without clothes on it doesn't even really look like a human um so it was hard for me to assess fit and then on top of that i couldn't really assess ease because you know we don't have the finished garment measurements in inches for me um so uh, you know, we're kind of going a little bit, going in a little bit blind. You know, we'd have to sew up one of these to, you know, get an idea of how it is drafted for our particular bodies. But you know what? You have to do that for the most part anyways. Even if I am giving you lots of information on fit, um, you still can't just rely on what I'm saying and how it looks like on a fit model or on a, on a model model. Um, you still kind of have to go into it with a little bit of you know, expectation is that we're going to have to do some things on our own here. So here's another example of the print mixing color blocking situation. I thought this one was really cool. Um, the caveat to this one is because these seams are on such a diagonal, you have to be super, super, super aware of your fabrication. It has to be super tightly woven, nothing loosely woven by any stretch of the means. Um, and you have to be careful with the weight of it. Uh, the more lighter weight you go, the harder it is to sew. <laughs> it runs. Um, and you can see that one here. So this is like kind of a drapier fabric. You can see whatever is happening here is a little bit funky, and then you're getting lots of puckering here. Probably not like anything that a normal person will notice, but those of us who sew, that would be really frustrating to me if I were getting all those puckers. But as you get into a heavier weight fabric, the puckers start to go away more and more. And when you get into something that's like, you know, suiting, something that's like a good, you know, tightly woven cotton or something like that, um, you can achieve really, really beautiful results. It is a very interesting design, just a little bit harder to execute really perfectly um, just by looking at it. You wouldn't think it'd be that hard, but it kind of, it kind of is. She also does a lot of really fun stuff with darts. So she obviously has a dart here, but the dart on the other side was made into this cut. And so you'll see that happening kind of a bunch. She like, you know, turns and rotates her darts into style lines, which I think is really fun and unique. This one was super cute. Obviously, you know, I love this one. I'm a frill girl through and through. So anytime you give me anything with like a cute little frilly situation, I am here for it. This one has two options. You can either add the sleeve or leave it without. I think that I like the sleeved option better just for the volume. You know, like this is already a very like oversized dress and the volume of it just really 
I don't know, more, just give me more. <laughs> um, and then pocketing for her patterns is really interesting too. So they're almost always hidden into a really inconspicuous seam. Um, and this one happens to be the center front panel. So that one I thought was really cute too. Here is the everyday chic dress. This is what the first time I noticed um, some fit issues was this one. So if you do get a photo on her website, most of the time it's this one, like in a studio with light coming in from one side, shaded on the other side. It is very, it's pretty, I get that, but it's hard to see. Um, sometimes we got this one, which is still has the light coming from the side, but it's not as dramatic. And then other times you'll see you, she has like people who have made this, like home sewists like us, um, and they take their photos wherever they take them. So this was a really good example of like seeing it in on many different bodies and in different kinds of light that made it a little bit easier for me to make heads or tails of what was going on fit wise. And the thing that I noticed here mostly is with the raglan sleeve. So it does seem like there's obviously lots of pulling here and then same thing on hers. And then this one had just like a ton of volume under it, but hers looks really good. Of course, I don't know what fabric she used, um, but if we're getting, you know, four out of the five people with a fit issue at one area, you can basically assume that something is off with that grading. I think what's happened is it's too narrow through here or there's not enough shaping on that top seam. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, I wouldn't be able to tell without looking at it, but this was the first time where I was like, Ooh, that actually doesn't look right. Um, so, and plus this design too kind of left me feeling like a little bit meh. If it were in the basics collection, I think I would be a little bit more forgiving, but it's not. Um, I, I guess I don't see it as an everyday dress. I also don't see it as chic. Uh, um, it's feeling a little, just kind of sad. We had this jacket, which I had high hopes for initially, but the execution on the model is really not great. Um, hers was fabulous. And I don't know who Tara is. I don't know if she has a blog or what, but Tara's style is so freaking cool. She wears a lot of like combat boots with like flowy stuff. And that is just like, I don't know, so bad A to me. Um, her execution of the sewing was a lot better. Um, so this gave me higher hopes for it. But I think all the jackets at, on So Different, none of them zip or button or have any closures at all. They're all just plain, like sewn closed on the center front. So for this one, I was thinking it, to me would make a better blouse. I think I would get more wear out of it if it were a blouse um, than this, you know, like cotton overcoat thing that just felt kind of weird to me. Um, but again, being careful with fabrication, if you go in and you start to use something a little lightweight and drapey, it, it gets a little sloppy in areas. But if you're using something crisp, um, like Tara did, then it, the execution's a lot better. I think it looks better, you know, being more voluminous anyways, because of, you know, all these fun gathers and everything. And then things started to get really good through here. So this Fleetwood frock I'm obsessed with. Um, what was cool about it, and you can see in this line drawing, is that the straps are like part of the bodice. How did she phrase it? She was much better. Integrated straps. So they aren't sewn into the facing on the front. The bodice pattern piece includes the strap. And then on the back, they're sewn into the facing in the back. Isn't that the coolest? I just thought that I've never seen anything like that. Um, and these days I'm just dying for like a flowy, maxi, simple square neck dress. Um, this one does have the pocketing with the little like, uh, like banded detail on the pocket. Um, I really loved this one a lot, a lot. It might be the fabric too. I really like that fabric, but I thought that, yeah, the, the, the design of the straps was just really unique and interesting. This one did have a close, a close, what is it called? Closures? Um, a zipper, a seven inch nylon zipper. I think it's on the side. Um, 
So some of her stuff is pull on, like these next two are both pull on. This is the fisherman's smock that I brought up whenever I was talking about the artist's smock. You can see they're very, very similar. They just have, this one has this, you know, different kind of pocket and the gather is in a different place. This one I thought would be really cool as a dress. I don't know. It just feels like I don't, wouldn't go fishing in that, but that's just me, I guess. Um, obviously, you know, wearing it over leggings or something like that would be like super cool too. Um, the, the way that this one was designed though, is that this is all one piece. It's like a grown on pocket, I guess. So imagine this dress long and then you flip this right sides together and stitch down your pocket. So this is actually the underside of the fabric. I felt like that was a little bit of a, I don't know, sloppier way to do it. And also who wants to see the wrong side of their fabric and the wrong side of this hem? I don't, there's a lot of things with it that I was like, that doesn't make very much sense. So I would have just cut it off and then sewn them right sides together the normal way, you know, and make, and you can still achieve these huge pockets on the hem. Um, just with one more cut and one more, you know, zip around your sewing machine. But I did think it was kind of cool. I don't know. I just feel also, is this just going to catch lots of junk and trash? I feel like that's just like things would just naturally fall in there. Not even my own. Like people that I'm walking past on the streets are just like, boop. <laughs> um, the VT, basic boxy tee. Okay, the sunrise jacket. I was thinking about this this morning, actually. So you know that if you've spent a day not looking at the patterns and then you're still thinking about one or some of them, you know that it's, it's a good one. So this one takes a simple denim, you know, open front jacket with bias binding on all the edges. And then you add in this quilted and I'm using air quotes, but quilted panel to create a gigantic pocket. She has this sunrise, sun starburst design, sunburst design there and also on the sleeve the sleeve feels a little bit artsy to me like too much artsy but this I just felt like you could do so many things with this piece you take this pattern piece and you could do like you know one solid fabric and then just quilt it you know like you would see in like um oh who's the lady with the bags and they're always very paisley and quilted oh name's not coming to me, but do something like that. You could do your own quilt design that isn't even these things. And, you know, you could do like a bunch of different triangles or something. Um, I just thought it was like a, I don't know, just gave me lots of inspiration for different ways that you could sew this up and make it super cool. Here it is from the front. I just think it's really interesting. I don't know. Um, maybe even like adding a little tie right here just to give you the option of closing it if you want. Um, but yeah, I thought this one was really, really neat. I would probably leave it off the sleeve myself, but that felt a little bit like, um, like 1970s rock star band guy, right? Like, I don't know. That felt a little, I don't know. Just took it a little bit over the top for me. Okay. Here's the boxy raglan we talked about. Another great basic. This panel tee and panel dress gave me a lot of strife. Um, this on her, the way it's styled and everything, definitely we are painting landscapes in a, you know, woodland forest with all the little creatures running around us and ivy growing up, you know, the side of our brick building, brick house, right? The chimney's going the whole nine yards. Um, this one was giving me like 2010, you know, where you're color blocking with the solids. We all did it. We all did it. But then I saw this one and I was like, wait a minute, that actually looks super expensive and super chic. So my final thought on this one was monochromatic, keep it all the same color with different textures. So you can see they use like a solid, I don't know if this is silk or batiste or what, but like a solid something here. This one has this little raised texture on it. And then this one is a solid but with like a little bit of shine to it. I thought that that was the best way to make this look its best um, versus any of these other options. The line drawing I liked well enough, you know. Um, again, interesting style lines. 
but I just thought that this looked very, very elevated and chic. I would absolutely wear this in a heartbeat. Next up, this ripple dress. I mean, I know we've seen a million different versions of these, but you just can't go wrong, right? The gingham, and then this one, they use like smaller gingham in the back. So it is like a play on, you know, pattern mixing, but in such a subtle way. Like you, I mean, obviously you have to turn around to even see it. Um, and then when you do, it just feels, oh, it's still so natural. Um, I did think that this was a little bit long on her waist. I think it's supposed to hit at the natural waist and her got a little bit long, but that's okay. That's an easy enough adjustment through here. But yeah, and I also was commenting too about how this is just the boxy top. Where'd she go? This is just the boxy top with a gathered skirt on the bottom. So instead of buying this one for $8.50, buy this one for $12 and then and then don't add the skirt and hem the top when you want the top and add the skirt when you want the dress. That way too, you'll also get the notched collar design versus the just plain rounded design. Um, okay, this one, another color block, print block situation. This one was super cool, I thought. Um, and I was really admiring how this fit her because she's so clearly a full busted gal. And this seam, this one here, is going underneath her bust beautifully. This is another example of where the dart on the other side was incorporated into a seam. Um, there is only one pocket on this dress, but you could obviously easily add that, that to the other side, just kind of rinse and repeat. Um, but yeah, that was pretty inspirational for like using up a bunch of different denims. This jacket, okay, we start getting into this area of the collection where everything is way too big for the model. I don't know what happened or why, but you can see on the line drawing of this biker jacket, Cardi, it's closed on the bottom. But for her, it's like wide open. Um, so that left me feeling a little bit kind of sad because I do like the look of this a lot. Um, but you can just tell, like, even through here, it's way too big and it's just like this neckline is super open. And then this, I just didn't care for that at all. I would never wear it like that. I would just keep it closed the whole time. Um, but obviously this is like, I don't know, two, three sizes too big for her. And I want to see it. I want to see it the way it's supposed to fit. I don't know if they were trying to accommodate a fuller bust and then, you know, got lazy and didn't want to do the full bust adjustment, or maybe the model that they made this for couldn't show up that day. I don't know what happened, but um, I want to see that one on somebody where it fits them properly. This one, again, was a little bit confusing fit wise. The design is really cute and interesting. But I couldn't tell where these darts are supposed to stop. Is it supposed to be an underbust situation like it is for her? Or is it supposed to be at the high bust like it is for her? I, I, I really couldn't tell what the intention was. Um, I'm not sure that you're supposed to, but hopefully maybe somewhere in the instructions are on the pattern pieces themselves it indicates where the bust line is and that's how you can tell if they're in the right place i i just could i didn't i couldn't tell if it was supposed to be more of like a fitted bust that flares open from the you know high waist down or like i couldn't really tell i guess that makes the most sense right um but we're getting better at the raglan granted she is leaning against the table here but even her raglan's a little bit better. Still not perfect, but we're getting somewhere with it. Same thing with this one here. Where does this little thing end? And then I was also lamenting on um, like bubble hems. So we're about to see, I think, five or so different iterations of a bubble hem. They are not for me as a pear shape. Um, they just accentuate all the, the my big butt and I don't want that to be extenuated but I think you can easily take this band off and just extend this down into more of an a-line 
and you'd have an interesting dress. It would look a lot like this one, if I'm being honest. Um, these two things aren't super different. The sleeve is, and I guess you get one pleat instead of three, but I mean, it wasn't really like they had to go back to the drawing board completely on this one. The Gambit collection is interesting. So this was obviously inspired by the Queen's Gambit, the TV show about the woman chess champion. But we got another um, bat wing top, which we kind of already had. And then in all the Gambit photos, you can't really see the garment very well. She's sitting down a lot of times or like positioned in a funky way. I'll show you more. This Reva jacket there's a better version of it. So if you like the idea of the Reba jacket, keep that in mind. Um, I'll be bringing it up again, but it was just confusing to me because it says it's unlined, but there's clearly a lining here. Um, and yeah, I just wasn't feeling how it was styled in either, in either situation. More like this, um, but I just couldn't picture myself wearing it. Like, how would I wear this? I, I did think it was neat for like a lounge around the house robe and something like lightweight then we have the is this the duo top another basic quick make um it's a take on the boxy tops we've seen so far but this one has this long grown on sleeve yoke panel thing all in one so fuller busted gals just be careful of these um that can accentuate your bust a lot this one, albeit way too big on the first model, look at it on her. I mean, very, very 60s, right? Like almost costumey the way that it's done this way, but, and too big, right? I'll show you in a second, another area. This is too big on her for sure. Um, and then here it felt like something's off, right? It feels too close fitted here, too long here, too big here. Like, I don't know what happened. But if you look at the line drawing and how it's supposed to fit, of course, you guys know I love fisheye darts. Um, so that was included. I just don't know how you would make this without it looking either like you got it at a estate sale or whatever this is. Um, like this doesn't look right to me either. Maybe it's the colors and the tights and the boots and the hair. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Like I want to like it a lot, but I'm just feeling a little bit like, Again, how do I execute this where it's giving its inspiration, but not so much? I, there's a balance there, right? Um, okay, so here's another bubble hem. For whatever reason, this one I fell in love with. I just, I don't know if it's, I don't know. And hers is pretty, but look at this one. I mean... Maybe it's the background. Maybe it's the wind blowing through her hair. It's Tara again with her combat boots, which I'm obsessed with. Um, she just looks so free and cool and like unbothered. And that is what I am here for. Um, yeah, so I ended up really, really falling for this one. I don't know if the bubble at the ankle does the same thing as the bubble at the knee or higher. It doesn't look like it on either one of them. I, I wouldn't even know that there was really a bubble hem there. I'd have to try it, to be honest with you. But, I mean, I like it on both of them. So, yeah, I don't know. Our, this one's unique and different to me. I, you know, we don't see a lot of bubble hems anymore. But, um, but these pictures really sold me on it for sure. Um, here is a long line jacket. This is probably one of the more chicer things that we see from So Different. Um, very elegant. This one was very well made. A little bit on the basic side. Again, it does have no closures. So you can see that here. Look at this stunning fabric and they matched it all up and everything really well executed. Um, so still a little bit of a retro vibe. This big um, collar facing thing we do see a little bit repeated. Um, again, with the raglan waist seam, big, deep pocket, fully lined, this one was. Yeah, really elegant and pretty. Good, simple jacket. Here's another gambit tee. Again, it's just a short sleeve bat wing with these details sewn in. She's sitting the whole time. I can't tell how long it is. I can't tell anything about the fit. 
This one has a knit top and woven skirt, which I remember doing that and not liking it for some reason. There, um, one of the other models did it all in one fabric. Yeah, this one here, which obviously I like a whole lot more. So I don't know. I, I think maybe just do this out of all knit and just know that the option is there for the woven. Because I like this one a lot more than this one. And I don't think it's the color or the print mixing. I think it's just, well, maybe that is exactly what it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't think it's the, the type of fabric, like woven knit, that matters here. I don't think you can make the bodice out of a woven, though. I, it's very close fitting, right? So um, you'd have to size up in the bodice, I think, if you wanted to do that. This one was cool. They just did this girl wrong on choosing this picture. Like, I get they were having fun in the studio and whatever, but this is just not, not, no. Like, it's fun, right? I get it. Personality is 100, but, like, the poor girl. Like, with her hair just, like, in an upside down, like, in a W shape. Um, but the concept of this garment is really neat. Tank dress or tank top underneath with a very oversized, slouchy, thin sweater knit on top. Um, I think I would wear something like this a lot. You'd have to find the exact right perfect fabrics. The dress part needs to be lots of stretch, lots of recovery, um, something a little bit thicker, you know, like a mid-weight rib knit or something like that. And then this has to be almost like a tissue knit um, so that you get the drape that you're looking for. I also thought maybe some kind of like sheer something, but just be careful because that can look a little bit dated or I don't know, not cute. Um, so picking out the fabrics at the same time for this one would be really critical. And then I would also leave off the pockets just because I can't do floppy pockets, especially in a knit garment. But I think the concept is there. The concept is really cool. And I, again, you know, I play around with the proportions. It's again, I don't know if it's too big on her or what, but it feels a little long in both on both pieces. Um, I would want to shorten this one to like high waist and that this can stay the same. This just the proportions need to be adjusted on this part, I think. Yeah, this needs to be short no matter what. And then I think this can be whatever length you want it to be. But I did think it was cool and unique. So this is just an apron, you know, the ones that cross in the back like that. So a nice little accessory, good little gift that you can make. Nothing revolutionary about the design though. We've seen that a thousand times. Um, this is the, the layering section. Um, they put this dress over pants, which is a bold move. Um, but <laughs> I, you know, I don't necessarily love that, but, and it's even Tara, my girl who I feel like I love everything she wears. She does have her combat boots on still, which makes me happy. But yeah, this dress with the frill by itself is very mod and cool. Um, I've tried dresses like this, but in the back, they make my butt look big again. So I'd have to make just the basic shift one without the, without the flounce. But it's reading a lot like that other one, like this one, the panel tee, right? Like that's the, this is panel, right? And this is layer up. Not that different. Really not that different. This one I loved. Look at this. Oh, so beautiful. I love the orange and pink color blocking. you got to look up on Google, like, the 2023 color blocking trends. They're doing a lot of fun things like purple and yellow or green and purple or something. And um, you can get a lot of really fun, fun um, ideas for color blocking. But the shape of this, I absolutely love. I was considering like, what would it be like a little bit more casual and like not in a silky, um, but like, I don't know, something a little bit more casual that you can still wear with sneakers. But, you know, I don't hate it with her strappy sandal either. It's a flat, you know, you don't have to wear heels with it. And I just think this would be so much fun to sew. I do have a dress similar to this. Do you guys remember the one where I did all the print mixing from the same fabric collection? It might have been a Meet Me at Six collection or something for the Style Maker 
um, video, oh God, maybe two years ago. Do you remember it had long sleeves and there's like a floral print mixing thing? Anyways, that has this on it and I love, I love that. And in that version too, this is also a slit. So that makes it even, even extra sexier. So you could obviously add a slit there too. I just love this. It's simple, but executed so, so, so well. A double cami, okay? I know we haven't seen double camis in a minute, um, but you know where the there's a lower layer and then another layer on top? So, you know, there's that. I don't know that those need to come back, um, but if they do, here's where you can get one. The apron is repeated, and then we have another one of these kind of like cocoon dresses. This one's called the Geo Dress. These are pockets incorporated into this seam here, but it's a bat wing top with kind of like that, that um, bubble shape to it. Here's another gambit dress. Um, again, we only really see this one from this back, right? Is that what happened? Oh, no, there's a side view here. It, the fit is a little bit better on this one. Still not perfect, but um, again, it's just hard to pull these off without looking like a costume like the Mondrian dress like is just so iconic um I just don't see how you would wear that and people wouldn't think that you just went to a vintage shop this one okay this is the scoop pinafore I have seen this before but I can't remember where again it has the bubble hem right so I'd be having to remove that and straighten this out but something that I think that they did a disservice here is this panel here is this here they made it gray and i would like to see it all in navy i don't think we have to like color block everything i think some things can just be all one i just and maybe because they chose this shirt that's reading gray too it just made it look like this is the pattern it goes like this and that i was like that's strange and like they're a lot that's very low right but when i realized it came all the way up to here I was like, okay, because now I can wear it with like, you know, my fitted crop tops and stuff like that and not feel like weird or exposed. It does have that integrated strap again. I just love that. And again, these become pockets. I love a pinafore. I get so many compliments on the pinafores that I make and wear. Okay, these harvester pants, another example where Tara is just carrying the weight of this all on her back. So we have this version here. Georgina made it a little bit more fitted, right? A little bit more like work appropriate, but look what Tara did. Oh, Tara looks so freaking cool. I love that they're baggier. I just think the oversized baggy, like throw on, I don't care. These might be my boyfriends. Who cares? Might be my dad's. I don't care. Like I'm just throwing them on because I'm just going to go, you know, harvest some stuff in the backyard. <laughs> they do have an elastic back and a flat front um, for fitting. And then there are pockets in the side seams. Oh, we don't even get a, oh, there they are the little scoop pockets there. One little dart, or I guess two in the front. And then, like I said, elastic in the back. But, you know, Georgina made hers out of Dupioni. So they're silky and, you know, nice. Whereas Tara made hers in linen you know, and they're going to stretch out. I don't know. I'm just here for Tara's, especially with the little boot barely peeking out over this little scalloped hem. Just love it. Tara killed that one. A quick make little basic dress where you can add a tie into, they never show the fisheye darts in the back, but there are some and you sew the little tie into them and you can have it cinch at the waist if you want. There are floppy pockets option, but you know, there's something to anchor them to. So if you're not going to do the patch pockets, which I think are lovely with the little notch on them, um, you know, I don't know. I'd probably just skip the pockets altogether, but that's just me. And I'm really, really, really weird about floppy pockets. If you don't know this already. <laughs> so that's just me. It's a me thing for sure. I know that. I think I might've converted a few of you, but okay. Do you remember that other jacket I showed you guys? This one here, the Riva jacket. This is the better version of the Riva, this one. This is called the Swing Jacket. Similar vibes, right? This triangle becomes the pocket. Also very similar, now that I'm thinking of it, to that um, quilted one, um, to the one that had the little sunrise. 
yeah, like this. The This design with this being the pocket is very similar. It just doesn't have the band. So that makes me think I could just get this and make either version. But all of this is one. This is not a raglan. It is all one piece. So a bit of a fabric hog, but it is really cool. I love the shape of it. Like I love how wide it is. I love how like where it hits on her. You could even go a little bit shorter or longer. But yeah, I just thought it looked really cool. Right? And with like styled like this over like skinny jeans or something, I just love that silhouette so much. So yeah, this would be, if I'm getting one of those jackets, it's going to be this one. Um, here's a cocoon jacket. Again, bubble hem vibes. Um, the notch on this one was really cool. And look at her version with this like ombre fabric. She just killed it. That looks so beautiful and so expensive, right? And I don't think the cocoon shape, you know, does anything to the figure. Maybe because it's all black underneath. I don't feel like it accentuates anything. Although she is fuller busted on top, which I am not. So she's an hourglass or maybe an apple. But either way, she's a fuller bust. So maybe that's why the cocoon is working for her. I just have to be really careful about anything that comes in under my butt. It just makes it look even bigger <laughs> than it already is. Um, so yeah, and then the pockets are incorporated into this seam here. Cool concept for a jacket for sure. She's also a little tote. Um, and then this was the more elegant take on the artist smock and the fisherman smock. This one here, I was like geeking out over the fabrication of this, over the execution of the sewing, over the fit, just everything. I was like, this may be like an artsy fartsy designer like collection. But this lady is the one who is selling artwork. She's the one who is a successful artist, whereas some of the other ones we've seen are the struggling artist. <laughs> um, it's really interesting to me that in one collection, So Different's collection, we can go from foraging in a field to literally like making the money, <laughs> you know? Um, so that I thought was really interesting take on, on the, the collection as a whole. Um, when you take in something like this and compare it against some of the more woodland type of designs, um, it made it, it made it really just kind of cool and interesting to me. They do offer the pattern pieces on this one where the grain line runs in opposite directions. So you can do this play on stripes if you want, but I mean, golly, that's pretty, right? Stunning. Um, then there was this one, which surprised me. So it's called the Moon Pocket Maxi, and I still don't fully understand the point of the pockets. Like, she's like, you know, you can top stitch these down, but I just didn't understand the point of having the pocket go up. Like, you can't put anything in there. So I didn't understand why, like, why wouldn't you just have the little... I didn't get it. I just, and I still kind of don't, but I do think that the style lines on this, like with this little thing happening here are super, super pretty. Um, this one a little less so maybe it's the colorway feels a little old, or maybe it's because it's this background with this, that all of that together is throwing me. Um, but this one with like a drapey little fabric, come on. She looks great. Is that Tara? No wonder. <laughs> like Tara's biggest fan right now. Um, but yeah, I thought the design, the style lines were really, really beautiful. There's a long slit on one side. Um, I probably would just only do the bottom pocket. I just don't understand the top part, but uh, maybe if I got into the pattern, I would see what the point of that was, but I don't know. I just feel like, yeah, really beautiful for sure. Super pretty. Okay, then there's this weekend bag, and then we end up with this eclipse dress. Again, a bit of a rounded shape, but not so dramatic. Um, the length of it is doing a lot of the work here, too, how it comes all the way down to the like top of your knee, and then the back is like just the below your knee. This colorway and fabrication is all wrong, so we're only going to look at this one, but um, it has a really nice turn back cuff. And again, I just thought this one was effortlessly chic and cool. The big pocket, you know, the subtle play on pattern here. Um, 
I just really loved this one a lot too. So there was a lot of redeeming stuff about So Different. She has a lot of patterns, as you can tell. My overall take is that it is artsy fartsy, but in a way that can be elevated or not. Um, so if you have a lifestyle where you're like digging in dirt one day and then you're going to like a movie premiere the next day, those are two extreme examples, but this collection has everything for you, you know? So, um, I'd like to know what you guys think though. Thanks for being patient with me as I re-record and do my second impression. I have a feeling some of you are going to like this version better because it's just so much faster, but nonetheless, we'll figure this out together. Uh, I my I want to try my best to make everybody happy, but as we know, that's nearly impossible. But either way, give me your opinions on so together. I'm sorry, so different. And yeah, I'll see you back next week with another indie pattern collection.